Okay. If I got my camera set right, uh, I'm going to do a video. I know I think I did it before, but I, I can't find it. <laughs> Might have throw the DVD away or or something. But anyways, I, it's called the You Know <clears throat> It's in the Bible. <laughs> that Jesus said he was going to build his church. <clears throat> Matthew you know, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the first four books in the New Testament. He says, and I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now, when he told Peter upon this rock, a lot of people think Jesus built the church upon Peter. Actually, Peter's name isn't a huge a huge stone. It's a small pebble. Christ didn't build his church upon a small pebble. He didn't be, and he didn't build it on on uh, Peter anyway at all. The rock that Jesus built his church upon was the conversation that took place there with Peter and the Lord along with the other uh, apostles was he said Peter I say unto you upon the, that thou art Peter and upon this rock I'll build my church and uh, he said who do men say that I the son of man am and he said that thou Jeremiah sir the, one of the prophets, Elijah or one of the prophets, but he said, who do you say that I am? But Peter said, thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. In other words, Peter, you know who I am and you know who I am because it was revealed from to you from heaven. But And I know who you are. And on this rock, in other words, you know me and I know you and I can build on that. So it was uh, it was it was all by divine inspiration and that's 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 the rock that Jesus was talking about that he would form and it would be and it wasn't you know it would be that it would be because uh, uh, it was divine revelation Peter didn't know you know he couldn't have known who Christ was unless he got a divine revelation and the, he said my father has revealed it unto you and Jesus knew that the that, G, that that Peter knew who he was, and uh, and it came by divine revelation. And so there's a divine. There was a mutual understanding. That's what I'm trying to say. There was a mutual understanding uh, there that they could that Jesus could build his church upon. But it, but Jesus said, I I say unto you that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. And the gates of hell should not prevail against it. Okay. He said that Jesus established his church before the day of Pentecost. That that gets out of hand. I've never seen a a Bible teaching that's it's so slaughtered by most of the religious or Christian North organizations of today nearly nearly every one of them will say that the that that the church uh, started on the day of Pentecost you know when the Holy Spirit came down and it filled the whole house and and tongues of fire set on them and and they all began to speak in other tongues that's what happened on the day of Pentecost actually what happened on the day of Pentecost the church that Jesus said he would build, that he built before he left, and he left before the day of Pentecost. And we'll get into that. Okay, it says if in 1 Timothy 3 and 15, Paul says that the house of God is the church of the living God. <clears throat> okay. 
uh, in, in the New Testament, the, the, the church is never referred to as a building, okay? Not not one time it, it when you when it's when it's it's ecclesia le, ecclesia is the Greek word for the word church and in that and that word means to call to call out you know like in the Greek day they would they would call out people to come out and and maybe have a business meeting or talk about the town problems but anyway they they would they would call them out and that's what Jesus as we will learn did with this that's what ecclesia means is to the called out ones okay and uh, and so Paul said that the the house of God is the church of the living God now you go read that in 1 Timothy 3 and 15 but I'm fixing to read it to you here but it's a really important scripture for you to spend some time on when you have time to go there and look at it and read it and, 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 and think about it. Meditate. Did you know you're supposed to meditate upon the Word of God? Did you know that? Don't just read it and lay it down, but read it and meditate on what you read. Get it, get it as well established in your mind as you can. And that way the Holy Spirit can bring it back to your memory. It says, Now Mark quotes Jesus as saying, uh, for the Son of Man is a man taking a far journey who left his house and gave authority to his servants and to every man his work and commanded the porter to watch. Uh, so he says that uh, for the Son of Man is a man taking a far journey. Now Jesus refers to himself many times in the, in the scriptures as, as a Son of Man. He told Peter, Peter, who who do they say that I, the Son of Man, am? So we know he's talking about about himself. For the Son of Man, in other words, he's he's saying, I'm going to, for for the Son of Man, which is Jesus, is as a man taking a far journey. Okay, uh, the far journey was he was going to go back to his father. Okay, uh, and he called that journey going back to his father a far journey and it might have been a far journey miles wide but it wasn't a far journey traveling wise I mean I got a gut feeling that, that the scripture would bear out that when he left from the Mount of Olives on that day and headed back toward his father yeah, I think he had a pretty, pretty good trip because he'd probably be traveling at a speed that we don't know nothing about it would make the speed of light slow. <laughs> uh, I kind of like to think about it as, uh, now this is Steve Stewart 101, but I kind of like to think about it as a uh, uh, the speed of thought. You think it and you're there. It makes the speed of light real slow. What is light? 186,000 miles a second? That's pretty fast. But I got a feeling that he took that far journey back to his father. And you know when he went back to his father, it was out, out there in the Mount of Olives. He took the, he took the disciples out there and, and, and he talked with them. And, uh, <clears throat> and they watched him go up. You know, and the two angels were standing there and they said, Why are you guys standing here looking at don't you know that this that that he's going to come back the same way that he left from the Mount of Olives? So that's when he left to take this far journey, and that's what he's telling his church: for I'm going to go back. I'm going to go on a far journey, but he says I'm going to leave my house. Who left his house and gave authority to his servants and to every man his work, and commanded the porter to watch. Therefore. Jesus in order to leave his house which is the church now I'm going to prove that to you right now the house that he left here was his church that he said he would build and he built it before he went back to his father all right it says in in 1st Timothy 3 and 15 but if I tarry long thou mayest know how thou artest to behave thyself 
in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and the ground of truth, had to establish it before he left, and since it is a well-known fact that he ascended to the Father before the day of Pentecost, the church was established before the day of Pentecost. I wish I wish people could get this get this in their thinking. They would quit saying the church started on the day of Pentecost because Pentecost was 10 days later from the time that Jesus went back to his father. Because it was 10 he told him to go down and tarry in Jerusalem and he said don't go out and preach this gospel until you get filled with the spirit. And 10 days later on the day of Pentecost because it Pentecost means 50, so 50 days from the time that the crucifixion took place till the time that Jesus went back to the Father. He spent 40 of them days here on the earth, but the last 10 days he spent with his Father. Okay? And so, so, so the house that he left here, it was the, uh, it says the house of God, which is the church, the house of God, Paul said, is the, uh, is the church of the living God, the pillar and the ground of the truth, and it had to be established before he left. Okay? Because we all know that he left 10 days before Pentecost. So 10 days after he went back to the Father, the Holy Spirit came. What happened on the day of the Pentecost, I might be getting ahead here, was it wasn't the birthday of the church. I'm going to talk about that right now. But it was it was when the time that Jesus said, I'll pray to Father and He'll send you another comforter. He says, I won't leave you as orphans, but I'll send another comforter. The Holy Spirit that came and filled the church on the day of Pentecost was the other comforter. Jesus didn't leave the church orphans. Okay? Okay. Okay, the, Jesus established his church on a mountain in the Holy Land. Now he says, He goeth up into a mountain and calleth unto him whom he would, and they came unto him. Now listen. He went up on a mountain and called unto them whom he would, and they came unto them, and out of them he ordained twelve that they should be with him, that he might send them forth to preach. And it's in three out of the four Gospels. It's in Matthew, the tenth chapter. It's in Mark, the, the third chapter. And it's in Luke, the sixth chapter. This, this event where he... He called out, he called out the twelve. What did I say it was? At Calisa. He called them out for a special purpose. Just like the Greeks did. They called the people out of their homes and offices when something special was going on. And they came out and they had their meetings and what have you. Well, Jesus did the same thing. It's called at Calisa. And he, and, he, and he called them out for a special purpose. And he called and those, and out of the, there was more disciples there than just the twelve, because it says it says he went that he went up onto a mountain, and that's really important to understand that he went up onto a mountain, and he called unto him whom they would, all right, and and there was more than twelve there, but out of them twelve, out of them, out of the 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 however many there was there, he picked twelve, which was already picked by him earlier he would say to one come and follow me he'd say to another come and follow me he said to peter come and follow me and 12 of them that he handpicked that he called out to be with him those were the same 12 he picked from that multitude he called them out for a special purpose ecclesia was that he could call them out for the special purpose was the beginning of the church and he went up on a mountain this was according to, to prophecy. And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountain. 
and it says the, the, the Lord's house is the church. Now that has a double meaning in Isaiah 2 and 2, and it's also, I think, found in uh, uh, Micah. Uh, Micah, the fourth chapter, maybe. I, I'm not sure about it, but almost word for word verbatim it, that, that Isaiah 2 prophecy is, is repeated again in, in Micah. Okay? And then listen to this. Now remember, Jesus went on to a mountain and called unto him whom he would. All right? And, and then it says in Psalms 72 and 16, there shall be a handful of corn in the earth upon the top of the mountains. The fruit thereof shall shake like Lebanon, and they of the city shall flourish like the grass of the earth. Okay? Now think about it. He went up on a mountain, and he called unto them whom he would, and they came unto him, and he ordained twelve. What is twelve? Twelve is just a handful. It was his purpose not to call more than twelve because it had to be just a handful. And twelve is just a handful. And it says here there shall be a handful of corn in the earth where upon the top of the mountain. Okay? So when Jesus went up on that mountain in Israel and he sat down and he at first he went there and prayed all night <clears throat> because he knew the next day he was going to organize his church so he spent the whole night in prayer and then when it was day he called unto him and he chose the twelve called them out and he didn't go up on the mountain he did go up on the mountain but he didn't go to an upper room in in, in Jerusalem now you get get this in your thinking the Bible says he went up on a mountain. He didn't go down to the upper room in Jerusalem on the day of Pentecost and start the church. He went up onto a mountain and he called out the ecclesia, he called out the twelve, and then what he was doing is he was fulfilling 